I was walking about 10 o'clock from my grandma's house in the South Valley over to Barrelas. I met up with these two cats that I knew from elementary school, middle school. They had some gas. We started hoofing a little gas. These dudes had bought the gas from all subs in a glass Kool-Aid pitcher. I turned into a kind of a fight. I started fighting with one. This one threw gas on me. I started fighting with him. This one lit me on fire. I remember this guy coming and trying to put me out with his jacket and his jacket catching on fire. I remember somebody had got a shovel and they threw dirt on me. I remember being in the ambulance and uh, seeing my shirt melted on my chest. The last thing I remember was I was in a big tub. They were scrubbing me down, all the dirt and stuff off of my burns. I woke up screaming, that's the last thing I remember. So I woke up maybe 10 days, two weeks later. And for the next two years, it was just pain every day. That's the only time I ever, I ever seen my dad cry. Well, I was in a coma and it turned red, like blood and there was a bubble came out. And it looked like glass because there was like stuff dripping off of it. And there was a person inside and the person was screaming. I think a lot of my anger that I had and stuff was because of feelings like that, just somebody did that to me. I'm from San Jose. It's a neighborhood in Southeast Albuquerque, one of the original neighborhoods of the city. I had friends down there and I started just hanging out in San Jose. Around that time, gangs started just kind of getting bigger in Albuquerque. Couldn't leave the neighborhood by yourself and get fucked up. My dad met me and my big homie at my grandma's house. Killer and my dad went in the other room and talked. They came out and I left with Killer. And from that day on, I'm a song boy. After they beat the fuck out of me for 30 seconds, it was all love. <laughs> Just like uh, you see on the movies, and it was weird. After that, it was it was all about just trying to get money. Just ran around the neighborhood selling crack, beating fools up, doing whatever the fuck we wanted to do, basically. We all went to prison. So all these young kids that needed role models, people in the neighborhood to look up to, we were all in prison. So it kind of came like a ritual where you really wasn't nobody in the city until you went to prison. One night, me and this dude were on Central and 57th, rolling a joint to smoke going down Central. This dude comes up, tries to open the door, passenger side, and uh, I shot him. I shot him a couple times and he died right there. Got sent straight to the main, straight to Santa Fe, penitentiary up in New Mexico. At that time, they threw everybody together. I didn't give a fuck if you were a kid, if you were young. So they threw me straight in cell block six in Santa Fe. When I got there, all the dudes that had participated and got sent out of state for the riot, at this time in 91, these men were starting to come back home, uh, come back to Santa Fe. A lot of them have life sentences still. They were starting to come back from Virginia and Mary Nell Noyes, and I was just getting there. I was a young kid, 18 years old. Got tested a little bit. Small prison, 700 something man prison. 80% of them are murderers. We all killers, we're all killers. So that's not something that scares people. It was a different place than it is now. You had to uh, stand up, you had to be somebody. You couldn't just go and sit down and keep your head down and do your time. And they're gonna say, who's that? Who are you? Where are you from? Luckily for me, I did have homies there. You know what I mean? Big homies. I had my big homie killer and them fools there. That's what happens when you go to prison. People forget you and people move on. The world moves on. 
As a person with feelings, you kind of expect it to hold a place for you, but it doesn't ever. That was one of the hardest realizations that I had to come to. That uh, the world's not gonna save your spot. I've missed uh, everything. My kids are grown now. Spent all their life in prison. We all have somebody that loves us, you know? I wish my grandma was here. I wish my dad was here. I wish I got to say goodbye to them, you know? But they're not, and uh, there's still people here. And we all got people that love us. And uh, when we hurt ourselves, we hurt them people too. Sometimes we hurt them people more because there was a time where I didn't give a fuck about anything. Fetch me. It catches up to you. And if you're lucky enough and if you're blessed enough to be my age, it will hurt you. <laughs>